So I'm using a uh, cotton stretched canvas, 24 by 36, and I'm working my sky to begin with. And I'm just adding um, a little purple and an ultramarine blue and a little bit of burnt umber to kind of achieve that grayish tone. And I'm coming back here now with various values of that gray mixture, lightening them and darkening them kind of where it makes sense. And really just paying attention to the shape and angles of my, of my clouds. Um, because this is going to be an aerial scene, it's going to be um, an aviation scene with uh, a squadron of B-17 bombers. Um, I want to give that perspective from the sky, which is why I'm kind of angling the sky a little bit to give that that feel or that sensation of of being in the air. So I'm continuing to kind of build out these clouds here and and really trying to think about shape um, because you certainly don't want to create the same types of shapes. You want a lot of random shapes. That's what really adds to a bit of realism here. I'm adding a little bit more ultramarine blue and then I've created this this nice gold color using orange and yellow and some white. And that'll be sort of the um, opening the sky up a little bit. Now I've mixed a little bit of an orange color here, more of a goldish orange color, um, as, and kind of scumbling this on now that the clouds have dried and kind of creating some shapes in the clouds, some patterns, some little formations and little poofy uh, clouds. So I'm kind of jumping around here and I'm kind of uh, using my negative space a little bit to, to allow to create that. Now I'm painting this in a little bit dark, uh, darker than normal because I'm going to come back with my airbrush and I'm going to sort of lighten it up and soften it and, and uh, kind of create a little bit of atmosphere and that's going to really lighten up these clouds. So keeping that in mind and um, going to be um, adding that airbrush here pretty soon. I also wanted to bring in some sun rays um, as well as a little bit of silver lining. So I'm using that same kind of goldish color that I've that I've mixed and I'm using my smaller 20 over zero, zero round brush, uh, which is a very fine, tiny little brush to get some really good detail here. And I'm going to be bringing in those, um, those sun rays a little bit. And I'm just using a, a larger broad flat brush and just having very little paint on the brush I'm kind of dry brushing that on a little bit. And then I'll come back with my rigger brush and I'll begin to add some add some um, silver lining to these clouds. It's important to lay all this in prior to bringing the airbrush overlay on top of this. Uh, that way I can just kind of have everything staged and be able to soften everything all at one time. So I'm just looking for areas where I think I'm going to have some some of that sunlight kind of hitting uh, through these clouds. So I come back now with that airbrush and I've just mixed um, titanium white and a little bit of ultramarine blue to create a nice kind of soft pale white color um, and then I've also gone back and remixed in a little bit more yellow to have a, a soft yellow kind of a pale yellow color and and that uh, is an acrylic airbrush so there are there are obviously oil airbrushes and acrylic airbrushes um, but this one is an acrylic one that I'm using. And now that I've come through and softened those clouds, I'm just kind of adding a little bit more detail into that and just kind of refining 
and improving things a little bit. I want to get all this kind of situated and, and kind of taken care of so that we can begin to start working from the back to the front, which is how I typically do most of my paintings. So I'm coming through here and kind of tweaking some things. I'm using that uh, gold color that I mixed with my orange and yellow and white and uh, coming through and, and kind of doing, doing that, that refining. Now I'm kind of painting in my ocean here and, I've, and I'm going back to that gray color that is, is umber and ultramarine blue and a little white to, to achieve that gray color. And that'll be the, the backdrop for the ocean here. And I'm, I have my Comer brush, which is a great brush, and that's what I'm using right now to bring in all the ripples and all the waves into the water. Otherwise, you'd be working yourself to death using a rigger brush or a script liner brush. It would just take an awful lot of time. Uh, but these Comer brushes are excellent to be able to achieve this. And I'll go through several times and I'll just kind of re kind of work this and and kind of um, bind the, the gaps together a little bit. Now I wanted to have some sunspots kind of dappling through the ocean here. So continue to use that, that comber brush. I'm going back into the, my, my gold mixture now and I'm just bringing in ripples on top of of the underpainting um, to create that illusion that light is striking certain areas of the ocean here. And I've drawn in my island in the back. One of this is a commission painting, um, of course, and um, one of the requests was that I have an island kind of in the background. So I've drawn that in with my charcoal pencil and that way I kind of know where I'm going to be uh, situating that. And I'm just coming back and kind of refining some areas with my comb or brush, kind of lightening certain areas and um, just refining a little bit here. Now I'm using my rigger brush and I'm kind of dotting on a little bit of of twinkle in the in the ocean here. And I'll do this in and throughout the entire ocean. But specifically here in the middle where I feel like the sun uh, ray would be most prominently striking the water. All right, now I've kind of darkened my my gray mixture here a little bit to go ahead and and block in our little island here. I'm just kind of thinking about the shape and, and I did a little bit of airbrushing over that as well. I, I wanted to get a little bit of atmosphere and a little bit of mist kind of at the base of, of the island. Now I'm using ultramarine blue and sap green for my shadow side on, on the foliage. And then on the sunlit side, I'm using a yellow green or a gold green um, with my sap green. Now for my for my browns, it's it's going to be blue and, and umber, and then on the sunlit side, I'm using more of my golds uh, to achieve that. I really did use a fairly limited palette. Uh, for this painting. I'm coming through with my rigger brush and just sort of uh, slightly adjusting and, and improving um, certain, air, certain sections uh, of the island, taking some time. Now I'm coming back with uh, kind of a, a pale blue and I'm just going to dot on here a little bit of ripple and a little bit of a water line here on the coast. I like using small brushes. I, I get a lot of control when using small brushes. So if you're familiar with my past videos, you know that I, I use 
small brushes quite a bit. I'm going back there and softening that island a little bit more with some atmosphere and now I've drawn in a, a basic outline of my of a few of my uh, B-17 bombers here and this is kind of a squadron flying. Now being that this is a commission painting um, it was requested that I would paint um, a pinup girl on the side of the bomber. Um, so it was an interesting request because the pinup girl uh, was is the mother of the client so I needed to paint a younger version of of the head of the mother on a pinup girl um, on the model. So I'll be doing that here shortly but I wanted to first paint in these B-17 bombers so that so that the viewer would, would understand that, that that's what what this is. Um, I'm using um, sap green and ultramarine blue uh, and a little bit of cadmium yellow to create this nice create this nice olive uh, color or this army green color. And I'm just dry brushing this on. Now acrylic dries so quickly that uh, you often don't have a lot of luxury of blending time. So I typically find as I'm painting an acrylic that I have to dry brush on my, my blending and my color transitions. So I'll get this all worked in here now and there's not an awful lot of detail on these, just enough to know that they're kind of off in the distance here. And I'm thinking a lot about my my color wheel and I'm thinking about complement colors and what I can be doing here to really make this appealing. And I'm thinking about where my light source is coming, which is coming off from the right. And I want to make sure that I keep that theme throughout the entire painting. Now, I really like this technique where I underpaint my or block in my, my basic color uh, of these planes all in a dark charcoal gray. That way, when I come back and dry brush on the greens, um, I'm letting a lot of that underpainting show through and that helps me to achieve kind of a real rugged effect, um, kind of a weathered appearance that these are, these are old planes, they've been used a lot. Um, so I'm really allowing a lot of that underpainting to show through and I'm not applying a whole lot of paint on top because I'm just I'm just scumbling it on and I, and I really want to not kill all of that underpainting. And it's just a technique that I feel like really works to achieve that metallic look um, and, and that kind of old weathered aged look as well, which is what I really wanted to achieve with these, with these planes. Now I go back into my my green mixture and I'm just adding a little more yellow to that and a little more white just to kind of highlight that a little bit more and really kind of show where a lot of that sunlight is glowing. I'm just kind of creating my my basic um, my basic outline here with it just using a yellow and a white and really sort of um, bringing in some more of that sun glow that's sort of silhouetting around the planes. Now the front end of these B-17s are all in glass because they've got guns. At the, at the front of the plane and that's where those guns are manned. And that will become more evident as I paint in the closest uh, B-17. I've got a lot of decals on it so in my sun, sunny side I'm using uh, just, just raw yellow white and then on the shadowed side I've just sort of grayed that up a little more with blue and umber because it's not going to be quite as 
right on, on, the, on the shadowed side. And I'm using some reference photos. I had a few sent to me from, from the client and uh, I did a little research as well because I don't really know these planes all that well so um, having to really rely on on some of the uh, the images that were sent to me. There's a lot of guns on these things. They were called flying fortresses because they were well armed with a lot of artillery. And the young men would fly these in the war and you have a whole team flying these planes. Um, and a lot of these young men would, would paint on the side of the plane. Oftentimes, uh, pinup pin up models were, were put on the plane, and, and that's where the unique request came in to, to paint this parent of, of the individual that commissioned this. And uh, so it was a fun and interesting uh, challenge uh, and, and a unique request that I've, I've not done before so uh, I certainly enjoyed the challenge of, of this. Now I'm using my acrylic pen and I've talked about these in the past. I, I recently discovered these acrylic pens in the craft section at, at a local Walmart actually and, and they are just excellent. Uh, they are actually acrylic paint but they come in a pen and I can get some nice thin lines and a lot of control over just using a rigor brush. So now I'm painting in our prominent feature to the to the painting, which is this B-17 bomber, and we're going to get a real solid close-up of the nose of of this plane, where the the gunman would uh, would would sit and man that particular station. And there's a lot of um, there's a lot of mechanisms, um, a lot of machinery uh, that goes into uh, to this section here and. And I was lucky enough to find a, a reference photo that helped me to sort of see exactly um, all these these mechanics that, that went into this. And of course, I don't know what all this is, um, but I'm just kind of going off this photo, and and I and I wanted to um, really just kind of go back and use my grays now that I've overlaid everything with um, black gesso. Um, going back into my, my gray mixture, which once again is ultramarine blue and, and burnt umber, and um, start to kind of bring out the highlights from the shadows a little bit here. So um, there was a lot that went into that, and um, I just had to kind of take my time and use some smaller brushes and, and try to distinguish each and every section there. I'll get all this worked in now, and um, then we'll uh, be able to move on to really the primary feature of the painting. Um, but again, I want to create that nice weathered look and a little bit of age to this plane. So adding the dark... Um, gessoed underpainting uh, and and really just thin layers of that green color helps me to achieve that that mixture and, and that effect so it really does take some time and and there's just a lot of detail i really like detail and um I feel like that I can I can really achieve a good level uh, of realism uh, with this particular technique. Now again, I'm I'm just using a really limited palette and um, mostly just kind of staying within the blues and the greens, um, and then just subtle variations of yellows to golds to oranges. Now since I've been trying to use my color wheel 
with those blues, the um, the subtle integration of adding a little bit of yellow, or sorry, a little bit of orange, which is the complement to the blue, uh, specifically in the in the ocean areas of the painting, as well as some of the blue undertones that I'm adding to my grays um, help to complement the the oranges that I've got also reflecting a bit in the ocean and of course the the oranges that I have in the uh, shafts of of, uh, of heavenly light coming down. Now I'm just blocking in the main body of this plane all in black gesso and it'll dry really nice and quickly as, as gesso typically does and then I can come back through now and I can use my charcoal pencil and I can kind of draw out some basic shapes. I've got my window. And now once I once I scumble in this army green color, I will go back and use my charcoal pencil and sort of again outline where all the the detail uh, is going to to live. And I want to add a little bit of reflect, reflective light um, so I can create some dimension, some dimensionality. Uh, again, using uh, that green, but also bringing in some yellows and um, a little bit of red. Red is the complement to green, and I like to mix a little bit of red or a little bit of sienna, uh, which is kind of a, a reddish brown, into my green. Um, since it is a complement color, it will help to sort of darken and gray out that color somewhat, and that's what I can use as a as my olive under underpainting. Pinning in these windows now, and I'll go back and I'll actually add in all the plating on the armor of of this uh, plane. And there's a lot of it. My reference photo uh, up close. It has several plate uh, armor pieces that are all interconnected. And, um, and then there's rivets or some sort of bolts that kind of uh, join them together. And so I've already added that now. And I'm gonna really use uh, this acrylic pen pretty faithfully. I've got a, a black one and a white one that I'll be using here. And they come in different different colors, but um, I've gone through with my black and I've kind of traced in those lines uh, for the plating and, and then going back and just adding all the rivets. Uh, and there's so many of them. Um, it certainly can be achieved with a small uh, round brush, but uh, so much easier done with the uh, acrylic paint pen. And I was really glad that I stumbled upon those and they've been really handy. Now this is the propeller here at the bottom, and I don't need a lot of detail here, just kind of create the subtle indication that that's uh, what we're seeing here are, are some of the propellers and some of the, the mechanisms there. Now I've drawn in my, my, my little pinup model here now that I've laid in the entire uh, underpainting of the plane here. And um, again, thinking about my colors, my color wheel I'm using uh, purple I've, I've mixed um, doxazine purple with some burnt sienna and a little white to create that nice uh, dark uh, gray, uh, grayed out sort of purple color and then going back with uh, with my yellow and yellow is the complement to purple so I, I wanted to add that here uh, as well to continue to try to complement the painting uh, using my color wheel. Now I've had to add in several layers of color since I'm painting this right over uh, the underpainting. Uh, that underpainting is trying to is trying to show through and um, as a result of that I I need to go through several layers. But this method I think is a lot easier than trying to paint around uh, our pinup girl. And so I just prefer to first work the entire underpainting and, and then I can overlay um, these elements on top of that. But it will require uh, several layers of paint 
Now, as many of you know who have viewed my past videos, um, I don't use heavy body acrylics. I use what's called uh, Golden Open. And Golden Open is a series of, of paints from the uh, Golden Company um, that was, was manufactured primarily for outdoor use. And uh, there's some sort of a retarder built into the paint that causes it to dry much slower. Now I live in Colorado, so uh, it's very dry here, it's very deserty, um, and I quickly learned that heavy body acrylics do not work well with this environment. They're not conducive. They dry entirely too fast to really work very easily. So I was excited that I found these Golden Open uh, series of paints, but the one drawback to uh, these these open paints versus heavy body paints is that they're not quite as thick and uh, they're a little bit more liquidy and I find that because of that I need to go through and add several layers of paint to be able to cover um, to just kind of cover up and mask that underpainting a little bit so I'll just go through here now and, and kind of keep uh, refining and, and adding the color. Um, now I've mixed my flesh tone here for our model and, and my, my go-to colors for my flesh tones that I like, they're five colors, titanium white, um, burnt umber, ultramarine blue, phthalo red, and phthalo yellow. Now with those five colors I can make all sorts of really great um, flesh tones of all sorts of types and that's kind of what I'm using here uh, for our model. Get her all painted in. I wanted to save the face for for the last because this is the most important feature. This needs to look like like this parent and I've got an old reference photo that was sent to me um, from, from a very long time ago when this parent was quite young. And uh, the challenge is going to be making our model our model's face look like, like this mother. Now, when it comes to portrait painting, which I enjoy portrait painting, but this is a lot different than portrait painting in the sense that it's more cartoonish and it's not meant to look uh, true to life. So... Um, that is something I had to keep in mind, but also making it look like the model itself or like the subject itself. So using my airbrush and um, I wanted to make this look as, as kind of close to real as possible in terms of um, these types of pinup models that were painted on the sides of these planes, uh, they were typically airbrushed on. And so I really wanted to kind of add this airbrush element that would add that, that kind of that sense of realism there. Uh, in terms of, of what would be expected on the side of this plane. So I've drawn in the face now of the model and the important thing to keep in mind that I found over the years as you do portrait style work or try to create uh, painting people is, is that it's really in order to create realism or to create it to look like the individual it's more about spacing than anything else I find. Um, really looking at the spacing between the eyes and, and, and where the nose is located, how low the mouth is, you know, the shape is important as well, but the spacing is really, really important to create uh, that effect that really helps to look like the subject that you're painting. Now with that, that comes to a close here. I appreciate you watching the video. Please subscribe. And until next time.